Hello friends, welcome to Physics with Ben. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share this video to those that need it. You may also love to click on the notification bell so that you can get new notifications anytime I upload a new content. I promise to make a video series on Cook's Law and this is the video. Cook's Law is a very very important topic in physics examiners love sitting questions on and as a student you cannot escape questions from Cook's Law. It is in light to this that I make this video. This video is, is, uh, is partitioned in three places. The first part is the theory on Hooke's law. The second part is the calculation on Hooke's law. And then the third part is the experiment on Hooke's law. I have already done a video on the calculations, but I am yet to publish the video. The video has been, the video has been uploaded on the channel. Immediately I upload this video, I will upload uh, the video on the calculations and then the, the last video will be the video on the experiment. So you will love to click in the description box below to find all the video series on Hooke's Law in this topic. The video series on the calculations are in five parts. Watch all of them. Um, you may also love to click in the description box to find the document. I prepared a special document on this topic. You click on it and you make your request and then I will send the document to you. Without wasting much time, let us go straight to the business of the day. In today's class, I would like us to achieve the following learning objectives. By the end of this class, you in particular watching this video, you are supposed to help me define elasticity, uh, define elastic material, state Hooke's law, uh, graphically represent Hooke's law, uh, define the Young's models. Uh, deduce the equation for the elastic potential energy stored in an elastic spring. Uh, deduce and ex explain the equation for extension of an elastic spiral spring by a force. A spring extended by this having deduced the equation for that. And lastly, uh, we will perform an experiment which is the last, which will be in the last video. And then we use all these equations in today's topic to do the calculations in Hooke's law in the calculations I already done with you. So let's go straight to the first point, definition of elasticity. What do we mean by elasticity? Elasticity. The topic is elastic properties of matter, Hooke's law. We are meant to know in our junior or introductory class to physics that matter is anything that has mass or weight and can occupy space. The state of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. But we are not looking at the properties, I mean, the state of matter in this topic. We want to look at the elastic properties of matter. You see me with a catapult here. You see that? What do you see? What do you observe? I stretch it with a pull force. And then I release it. Observe the original lens. Do you see any distortion? Any deformation after this force has been removed? No. And so we can say that this rubber is an elastic rubber. We are coming to that. So what is elasticity? So this rubber has the ability to extend and then return back to its original size and shape. Elasticity is defined as the ability for an elastic material to regain its original size and shape after the distorting force is removed. I say it again, elasticity is defined as the ability for an elastic material to be stretched and then regain its, uh, elast uh, uh, regain it, uh, its original size and shape after the distortion or the distorting force has been removed. 
You can see that this spring uh, removed the loaded mass and the spring still maintains its uh, original size and shape. You can notice the, the position of the pointer. I, I put this mass, it stretches, I remove it, it is still back to the original place it was, uh, it was pointing. So that is the meaning of elasticity. The next thing we want to look at uh, is uh, elastic material. An elastic material is that material, elastic material. An elastic material is that material that has that has the ability to regain its original size and shape after the distorting force has been removed. An elastic material is that material that can regain its size, its original size and shape after the applied force has been removed. The next thing on the line we want to state Hooke's law. I keep on telling my students that physics has four scopes. And questions in physics are structured around these four scopes. The first scope is uh, the theoretical aspect of physics, the mathematical aspect of physics, the graphical or pictorial aspect of physics, and then the last is the experimental aspect of physics. In the theoretical aspect of physics, examiners will actually define concept. What is velocity? What is linear momentum? Define momentum. Define acceleration. Explain the concept of this. Then they will also have to state laws and principles. State Hooke's law. State Ohm's law. So what state Hooke's law? Hooke's law states as follows. Hooke's law states that provided the elastic limit of an elastic material is not exceeded. Provided the elastic limit of an elastic material is not exceeded. The extension E is proportional towards the applied force. Provided the elastic limit of an elastic material is not exceeded. The extension E is directly proportional towards the applied force. What that means is that the more you add force to an elastic material, the more it extends. And the elastic material and the force, they have a relationship. And that relationship is a direct relationship. So mathematically, Hooke's law states that force and the applied force is directly proportional to the extension. And that the applied force, removing the sign of proportionality is equal to what? Ke. We can call this our equation number one. Call this equation star. Where F is the applied force and K is the stiffness of the material or the force constant or the elastic constant of the material and E is the extension of the material in meters. And so mathematically we say that the, the elastic constant of the material or the force constant is given to be K is equal to force all over E uh, in the unit of meter over meter and uh, we write as uh, the delay is meter per meter. So uh, the, the elastic constant of material is defined as the, the ratio of the force to the extension, and that is the SI unit. The next thing we we want to so the meaning of this equation is that as E increases, F increases. As E decreases, F decreases. A direct relationship. We want to look at the graphical representation of Hooke's law. Graphical representation. Graphical representation of the snow. Good. I would love to use this slide. This is the most important aspect of this topic where we are going to generate some equations and some and the definitions of some terminologies.
There are two ways to draw the graph of Hooke's law. Whichever way that the examiners will ask you, they are still the same. So the first graph is that the graph of load. The graph of load against uh, load in Newton against extension in meters. Recall that load is the same thing as force, the same thing as weight, and all of them are mass times gravity. That is the SI unit for load. So the first graph is like this. Arrow here and arrow here. Meaning, uh, if I if I stretch this rubber, that is the force. The arrow up indicates the stretching force, and then the arrow down indicates the force of being removed. I stretch it, I remove it. So within this region, from zero to p, we call it the proportionality limit, and then. From, from this to a point here, we call it the elastic limit. To another point, we call it the D point. And then to another point, we call it the breaking point. Examiners may ask you what is the meaning of this. From the graph above, explain the meaning of P, E, Y, B. But examiners may not write the symbols the way they are on the board. They may write A, B, C, and D. That from the graph above, what is the meaning? What is the meaning of C? What is the meaning of B? What is the meaning of A? So A is the functionality limit, the limit where this equation is applied. So from 0 to, to P, we say that Hooke's law is obeyed. That is K is first word. X is what? KE. Where the material, if you stretch it, it will still obey Hooke's law. Point E is called the elastic limit of the material. Point E is a limit, is a point where if you stretch the material and remove the force, the material will still retain its original size and shape. Beyond this point is point E. Point, I mean point Y, which is called the yield point. As the name implies, the yield point is the point where the material has yielded or will yield all its elasticity. The material will yield all its ability to regain its original size and shape after being stretched. Do you understand? Point B is called the breaking point. The, the breaking point is the point where any, any little additional load or force will deform permanently, will break permanently and destroy the material. The material is condemned. And so the, the second graph looks like this. See the same thing. Uh, zero comma zero. Your arrow up, your arrow down, and then here your elastic limits, uh, your yield point, and then your breaking point. Here is a graph of extension in meters against load of force in meter. So this graph is very, very, very important. Now, if you want to plot the graph of Hooke's law that obeys uh, a graph of Hooke's law, a graph of, of Hooke's law, whose elastic limit is not exceeded. For instance, the graph of load against load in Newton, uh, extension in meters. The graph will look like this. I told us that uh, the force, the force and the E, they share a direct relationship. And from this, you can write that uh, our equation uh, F is equal to K, it looks like Y is equal to MX, a straight line graph with no intercept. So if you plot this graph, the slope of this graph will look like this. Where here is your E2, here is your E1. And here is your L2, and here 
is your L1. So the slope of uh, the graph of Hooke's law is going to be the change in the load all over the change in the extension, which means L2 minus L1 divided by E2 minus E1. And so the, the, the slope will give you the stiffness of the material in the unit of Newton per meter. We are going to do this in the in the video, uh, I promise to run an experiment. To this, we have come to the end of this particular video series. I would like us to watch the next one where I will finish all the explanation on the theory. Uh, stay tuned and continue to watch out. Thank you and God bless you. Bye bye.